Hi, welcome to this uh, short demo on using the IF output on the ICR7000 receiver um, and feed it to uh, an SDR radio and, and demodulating straight on IF uh, using the SDR. What initially got me uh, started in this project is that I'm, I'm working on building a radio telescope and everybody in, in the community seems to be using the R7000 for that which uh, because it's it works all the way up to 2 gigahertz and uh, it's easy to to set up for astronomy use. There are, however, a, a couple of um, modifications you need to do to the R7000. You need to remove the uh, the DC output uh, or the DC feed to the RF output. You don't want nine volts out there as well. Plus, you need some way to disable. You need to disable the the AGC, which is easily done, and all this information can be um, can be found online. So here I am. I uh, I tuned to our FM an FM radio station on uh, the 7000 show. Sorry about the um, the shaky picture here. I'm doing this one on my iPhone, so so bear with me on this one. I'm tuned to a, to an FM station, and you can hear a Danish radio station. I'm in Denmark, so uh, language here is a little bit encrypted. Now, um, if we look around the go around to the other side here, you can see the yellow line is just my antenna input. It's a wire across the floor. The interesting thing is the IF output here which I'm feeding to my Ephedri uh, SDR net and you can see I'm actually I've inserted a small 3db attenuator as well just to make sure that the Ephedri sees um, 50 ohms with uh, reasonably reasonably well also that means that I'm terminating my uh, IF output reasonably as, as well so output from the um, Ephedri goes to my Mac Again, a little bit shaky, and uh, I'm using Qt SDR, and here you can see I'm tuned to the 10.7 megahertz IF frequency of the uh, of the output from the R7000. And if I turn down the volume on the R7000 and enable volume on my Mac, you can hear it. I'm easily demodulating um, the IF content. So here you are, and, and again, I'm, I'm going to use this for a uh, radio telescope project. If you, if you read how other people do this, usually they put a spectrum analyzer on the, uh, on the IF output. However, they are pretty expensive, and uh, since I had the, the SDR radio anyway, um, it seemed like an easy way to, to have a decent spectrum uh, analyzer functionality going here. Um, the, this version of Qt SDR is actually not the official version, it's a version we've written for the Ephedri uh, receiver so that I can benefit from all the gain steps in, uh, in, in the Ephedri. Um, if you're interested in this or in this distribution, my friend James Lotberg in Norway actually made this for me and I'm sure that we can, uh, we can figure something out uh, in a way that you could uh, get a hand of, this, of, of a copy of this that natively supports the, uh, the Ephedri. Um, Okay, so this is the setup. I'm actually demodulating wideband FM, um, transverted down from 91 megahertz to 10.7, um, and this my hope is that this will work equally well from uh, 1.42 gigahertz down to uh, down to baseband level, and I'll be able to hopefully in time see a, a nice hydrogen line spectrum on my computer like this as well. There's one thing though, um, if I switch on the gigahertz. Uh, function. This means that I'm not listening on uh, 91 megahertz. I'm listening to one gigahertz on 91 megahertz. Um, as you can see, my signal disappears, but also there is a small remnant on of 10.7 megahertz left. And this uh, this is probably because the internal oscillator in your radio actually uh, sends something out the back of the radio as well. And this is far from ideal, but it's just something that you need to think about if, if you're going to use an R7000 as, uh, uh, as an amateur radio telescope receiver. Also, um, if you use the radio here as demodulator and takes, take it out as an AM signal or an SSB signal, so go all the way down to baseband and just, sim and just uh, analyze the audio output, um, because that you have this 10.7 megahertz carrier that's going to mess up your AGC so it's really important to do the AGC modification um, in order for not in order to make the AGC not actually react onto this carrier which seems to be there all the time another thing is that in in this mode when I when I'm mixing in one gigahertz 
the radio actually still seems to be, there is still some leakage into the radio at the original 91.7 megahertz frequency. So if you're next to a transmitter tower that I am, I can actually, if I boost the gain here, I can still hear the FM station that leaks through the 1 gigahertz conversion chain. Um, that's also something that you want to um, be aware of now if you're setting up a telescope that you're listening at 1.42 gigahertz. Then if you have a jammer or something else coming in at 420 megahertz, you're probably going to hear it. So as a piece of advice, um, you should definitely add some kind of bandpass filter in, in, um, in your antenna set up uh, after the LNA, the first time amplifier right after the antenna. One last thing, um, this cable on top of the receiver is the ICOM CIV control cable enabling me to control the uh, radio from, from the computer which can be nice if you want to set up frequency scans or just um, uh, fool around with the memories and stuff like that. Turns out this is, I mean this is an old radio, it's from the 80s but actually it works really well. You can find them seemingly cheap on eBay. Well, one common issue they have is that the keypad here where you actually enter the frequencies is kind of bouncy so if you press a digit you get more than just the one digit you pressed. Um, one way out of this is, is buying or getting a CIV control cable like this and, uh, and controlling the radio through the computer then, uh, then you don't even have to use the keyboard anymore. Alright, so um, well, that's a short demonstration. It's indeed possible to use the IF output and an SDR receiver and it gets you a nice spectrum analyzer for uh, for your experiments and um, and I mean if for nothing else uh, right what I've done right now is, is basically extending the SDR radios uh, frequency range to 2 gigahertz by using this receiver as a transverter and and the uh, ephedri um, and the ephedri receiver supports a whole megahertz of bandwidth output so um, so any frequency from um, from zero megahertz basically or, or like 500 kilohertz to two gigahertz I can now watch in one megahertz <clears throat> sorry one megahertz chunks so that's it um, good luck out there and uh, if you want to comment on this uh, let me just switch back to to the radio here if you want to comment on this uh, feel free and if you have any questions uh, feel free to post them as well take care cheers